for floating tremolo and fixed bridge you need to check this out check this out like and subscribe like and subscribe yeah <laughs>
standard front row system on that guitar, but it loses the purpose, in my opinion, of having a fan fret. Right. Now, with our tremolo system, you can have that perpendicular fret higher up and still have the fan in here, depending, of course, on what kind of skill you play in. Right, okay. Yeah, uh, um, but that is all stuff you can figure out when you're a designer. Right, okay. You can work on that. But as I said, we've got like a 22 mil offset between the high E and the low E. So your, so the bridge system can be applied to a standard... Uh, standard guitar, which like, like that. You know, vibrato straight frets, vibrato system. It can be fan frets or straight frets? Either, yeah. Yeah. Uh, fixed bridge, uh, or oh, sorry, um, with, a, with a, uh, a locking nut, I mean. With your machine that's here, you can use it for fine tuning or for headless and fan fret. You can put in this system now. And if, like a strat that doesn't have that, you know, it's been, you know, like a super strat, super strat, yeah, um, that you may, may not have these, it doesn't ones, matter to have these locking on. Yeah, I've got a new terminal system coming for that. Oh, wow, we, we are in the developing or in the, in the final testing stage for that as well. It's awesome. But I did not bring it yet because it's not finished yet. <laughs> <laughs> but it will be then for your um, standard strap style of non-locking okay, awesome. tremolos, vibratos. Awesome. So we discussed the versatility of applying it right to different types of guitars. Yep. So can you tell us about the technology of the knife edge? Okay. The um, this tra uh, system exists out of two big pieces basically, you've got the um, plate and then the individual, individual bridges. Right. Individual bridges are all machined out of brass. Out bell, of bell brass. Bell brass. People are going to go like, what's the difference? You've got different mixtures of brass. Right. Yeah, it's not, brass is not brass. Okay. It's different compounds of it. Um, and then the plate, we start with a low carbon steel, machine it, and then we make a very long, sharp knife edge because it's really important. And then it goes through a special process for makes it hard. Yes. And it comes down to a HIC of about 43, which is the highest you can get. Yeah. If you go any higher than that, it becomes brittle like glass. If you drop it, it just shatters. So what's HIC? That's the carbon. HIC is, is the hardness uh, of the material. And right. There's ways you can test it by pulling it or pushing it. Okay. And it's just about the resistance or what it takes to get it to break. That's um, some science for you. Oh, there's <laughs> so much science in there that I can, I can have an whole episode with that. Yeah, right. No, well, we should. Which, well, maybe we should one day. It's um, yeah. But the HSC is, is like the hardness uh, testing of the material or the yeah. resistance testing of the material before it snaps. And this is just a reflection of how awesome uh, Remco is about developing technology. So even before the product became physical, it's just getting the metal, the primary material right. It's get really cool. get the basis right, and then you can build up from there. So yeah. what we also done is that the knife edge is the most important part of a full floating tremolo system. Right. Because you want the knife edge to sit down, and you want as less friction between the post and the knife edge. If yeah. it becomes round or dull, it doesn't go back to the zero point. So what you get, and it sticks like a little bit up, and you yeah. push it back to get it back to the zero point again. Yeah, right. And we had that in the previous models uh, because of the hardening uh, process that we used, the extra carbon that we put in, that it became dull. Right. So we redeveloped, redesigned, redeveloped the whole technique, and uh, yeah, we've mastered it now, I think. Yeah, right. And also the posts that we have for these um, systems are specially designed and made by us. So it's not the official market post. It's also a hardened material. It's a Hardened um, stainless steel. Yeah. Because then you got the hardened steel and hardened stainless steel. So the two different materials. Yeah. Um, touching each other, which is better for your tongue. Yeah. And also for friction. Yeah. And I guess then if they're both being hardened, that means they won't be from doing dive bombs. For dive bombing, you won't get the little chips in it over time. Fatigue. Fatigue. Metal, yeah. Metal fatigue. Metal fatigue. Um, yeah. What you see a lot in, in, in other tremolo uh, fibrato, I keep saying tremolo because it's it's the word what everybody uses, but it's vibrato. But vibrato, is just, even I uh, get it wrong. Even, so. even I get it wrong all the time, you know, <laughs> being a guitar you nerd for, for 20 years. Um, that's just because everybody says tremolo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but vibrato system. The tremolo is an actual... Uh, pedal. It's a pedal. Well, this actually came from the amp, didn't it? Well, doesn't, doesn't tremolo come from volume? 
Is it altering pitch or volume? Volume, I think. Oh, right. And pitch. It's both, because the tremolo pedal does that. Yeah, right. Okay. Oh, well, we can go into that one. Another episode. <laughs> Cut, Cut that, that one out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, no, no, no. Wait, wait. So, yeah, the, um, the Fabrato system. Um, yeah, so we've got this two, the, the, the hardened steel plate and then the hardened stainless steel um, post, which are also specially designed with the V for the post in it, which yeah. is really sharp, which sticks right in there, and ours have a locking device on the inside. Yeah. So what you do, you can screw it in, and then inside of it, there's a little Allen key, so you can lock it in. And we have very fine thread, so you can go very micro adjustment. You can uh, erase right. the bridge. Because so what you do with this system, for example, each saddle, you can raise that to get your radius of the fingerboard. Yeah, right. Because each fingerboard has their radius. Most of the times, it's always set to 14 inch or 16 inch. Yeah. With this one, of course, you can customize it to each string height. And then for a for a overall height, you just raise or lower yeah. the post. And we've got that with very fine thread, same thread that we use our um, turning wheels for. Yeah. So you go in very microns, you can go up to get a really high or very very precise low action. I love low action. Yeah. Some people go for higher, but I like it low. I'm a lazy player. Fair enough. Yeah. So fair so you just um, so my take on it is uh, you can. Probably develop a bridge made out of anything, but what Remco is articulating is that they spend a lot of time with doing R and D on the posts and the knife edge, so the friction point, because if that wears out, it will won't stay in tune. Here's the tremolo. These are machined to our specs, yep. which have a, um, a trapeze inside of it. So there's always like a friction point of where, or a sharp point where the string rests on. If you don't have that, you can get wolf tones. That what? A wolf tone, or a, what do you call it? Um, harmonic overtone? Harmonic overtone, where a lot of times you get on the B string, when it's not really sitting on the sharp edge, you pick a note and it's like, it's, it's like a semitone. Yeah, with right. that, which is annoying, you don't want that, right. and it's mostly comes to do with or the nut or the bridge. What, what did you say it's called? Wolf tone. Wolf tone. Yeah, right. So that the note is just not there, it just it gets an extra harmonic with it because it touches something. Yeah, right. And so that's why we make those edges really sharp, it sits right on there, and uh, yeah, you can dive bomb it and it still comes back into it, the slots. And you're talking about right now the groove that's the in groove there. in there, yeah. Wow, which is like it goes that way, oh, like yeah, so. Inside, yeah, and then opposite the other way again. So uh -huh. it's like a uh, like two pyramids coming to, uh, together. Together. And so there's like one a, one point where the sing uh, yeah. where the string not the sing where the string rests on yeah. very small part and um, that's yeah. awesome. That's cool. And, and what about the uh, the tremolo arm or yeah. fibrato arm, Wemmy bar? Any other names <laughs> out there? <laughs> the wing bar. Send them to me. Uh, that's made out of stainless steel. So you don't have to worry about you get any corrosion in your hand, and then it's you just slide it in. You can just pull it out. That one, not this one. That one. You can yep. just pull it out, okay. and uh, there's a little bit, uh, bit of friction in there, of course. Yeah. But if oh. you look on the side there, there's a little grub screw. Now you got your grub screw, ah. and if you open it up a little bit, it gets in easier. Okay. So you so can, uh, can so you can adjust that. Right. Okay. So maintenance on it is quite easy. Oh yeah. Yeah. So you can set it up for every every person. If you want to have it like it swings around, you just open up the grub screw more and it just swings around. Yeah. Um, but if you like it sitting on a position like with this, you just tie it a little yeah. bit more. Yeah. yeah it's I just think, like a little yeah. um, Teflon tube inside of it. I think for me, I like to have it out there because I like to do yeah. the, the back end. It's different in this system, you know, it just hangs around all the time. And then if I bring it in, I usually... Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I've never really thought I'd just do it. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, every, every player's got their own little thing where they, where they like to have their... Um, it's like table tennis. Uh, like the arm sitting. Roger yeah. Federer backhand. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, right. And Excellent. also then the curve of the arm, we, we've been working on that. So it's it sits oh, really? comfortably. You know, this for me, this is like a standard 
uh, whammy bar arm, vibrato arm, tremolo arm. That curve is way too high for me, for my likings. Oh wow, so the el you've worked on where the elbow goes. Yeah, and also the angle of it. So we, uh, we've been modifying that as well. Uh, oh, I had just, no idea people would actually like spend time bending a freaking oh, we, 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 bar. <laughs> we, we, we've been bending a lot of steel. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, and so yeah, this is now ready for 6, 7 and 8 string. Yeah, right. Okay, so cool. there will be a lot of guys I think will be interested in an 8 string vibrato system on their multi scale guitars. Right. Going for the, what were you, 8 string? Drop F sharp, something. What is that? Yeah, the guitar right. player. The brown note. Yeah. <laughs> the brown when, notes. The yeah. Video, that's when you sack the bass player. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Well, you know, a lot of guys started playing eight string now, and I met some guys who are going to go, "Oh my goodness, the way that they, they use the eight string is not like." Blah, 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 blah. It's like they use the whole. Yeah, right. Uh, notes. Wow. Into it, and it's just fantastic. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So yeah, maybe in the future you're going to build a 9 string or yeah. a 10 string, whatever, you know, yeah. uh, crazy stuff people come up with. But um, yeah, so we're going to show these now. They're going to be, um, they'll be on the market now. Uh, yeah. but and gotta, what website can they, we get them, Matt? To Apollo Music Parts. Yep. Dot com. There it is down there. There it is down there. Yeah, down there somewhere. Uh, there, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Up there. there. Up there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then we're going to first put them out to the public at the Melbourne Guitar Show of yes. 2019. Yeah, so it's coming out very shortly. So if you're in Melbourne, make sure you get to the Guitar Show. Do you know exactly where it's held? In the race, cor race course there. Um, oh, right. I, I, tell, I tell my Uber driver, go here, and he brings <laughs> me there. <laughs> it's, it's, it's at a race course there. I look it up, Melbourne Guitar Show, and I'll be there uh, with yeah. my friend Danny Taylor from ET Guitars. Oh, I wanted to go, but I'll be in New York, sorry, but other than that, ah, I'll be there no. next year. You should hide to Steve for me. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, you need to uh, check that out in, uh, at the Melbourne Guitar Show, but very exciting. This is being developed just like eight minutes from my house, which is just phenomenal. And, uh, and high, high tech, so all those, I know a lot of guitar players, you should uh, look you up. And right. check it out. So check it out. Oh, and actually, you want to talk about the... Oh, yeah, we can also modify the uh, turning wheels. So we can... These are 20 mil long. Right. If you got an Ibanez SG... Ibanez SG? SG or IG. 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 Yeah, SG. Oh, SG standard guitars. It's a... It's a... It's a play... It's a play authentic guitar. Yeah, right, yeah. Okay. So we play authentic, we play Ibanez. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, that's in a 10 mil uh, turning wheel. So then you can actually reach it under the uh, cutout, which is under there, where normally your Wemmy bar, Fabrava system, Joe turning right. wheel, whatever. <laughs> Hits in when you hit the notes high. Right. Then it gets in. Because this guitar has been modified the hell out of it. Right, it's been cut out. It's been cut out and there's like a bathtub underneath of it. This is my prototyping guitar where... Yeah, you can uh, quickly chuck it all in. Exactly, and you know the guitar is not perfectly set up or anything. It's just whack the stuff in. Does it work? Yes, no. What right. do we have to change and uh, here and there? But yeah, if you got your um, RG Ibanez, play authentic, <laughs> then we've got shorter turning wheels for that. Um, so it's easy for you to get your fingers under it, mm. but most of the time we just ship them with a 22 mil. So, because uh, uh, Remco is actually a guitar builder, we should probably put your website in too. Do you want that on? Oh yeah, you can do that. Yeah, Maya Guitars. Maya Maya Guitar Builder. So yeah, which is cool. Which uh, videos will probably already be out by the time you see this. So so then go back. Yeah, yeah, that's right. There's a link happening now. There you go. Oh, there's a photo of Remco's guitar. Actually, we've got it in the video. There you go. So Remco built that. Headless. I'll build this one. No, yeah. I'll build it with my head. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. Well, uh, make sure you get to the Melbourne Guitar Show, and uh, I'll see you all again. And I'll probably have some playing out right about now. <laughs>
just on here that I've been uh, swinging the hell out of this thing and we haven't touched the tuning. And it just keeps keeps coming back to zero, which is actually quite phenomenal because some of the other guitars I have, um, I do that kind of thing to actually go out quite easily. So uh, pretty cool, man. <laughs> Like and subscribe, like and subscribe.